Hello YouTube, welcome back. Uh, this is Otis again, which I never said my name in the first video. If you're watching this on the MR1. Um, this is the follow-up video. I wanted to tell you the things I've changed or done different. That uh, I'm not making suggestions, just telling you what I did, do with it what you want. Um, so I also said I'll show you my shop. So uh, here you go, here's all that stuff. First of all, I mentioned I have a lane mirror crossfire pro also this is it right here sitting right next to my mill so uh and in the shop as you can see the lift down there uh, i got the tractor and the trailer the side by side truck i'm building sorry it's blurry the uh my work table so uh you know here we are i don't have a lot of room so uh, this is one of the biggest things for me of my changes a lot of people cannot put their machine as far away from the wall as it would be nice. Like Langmeyer's videos are in the middle of a room. Um, I couldn't do that. I don't think most people can. So I wanted to cover my biggest thing, I think, for changes. So here we go. So I have about three inches between the machine and the wall. The wires have to come out, you know, through the back of the machine in there. And you have to have room for that. This conduit here is probably only two inches. Um, I needed as much room as possible. So what I had to do was this control box normally mounts on that leg, which puts the back corner about eight inches behind the machine, which obviously I don't have that. So once I had the machine here, I had this 125 aluminum plate that I put the three mounting holes in it that match this control box, just moved them from the legs to there. I mounted this plate obviously between both legs. I mounted a control box with the isolators because I don't think this is supposed to be mounted to metal. So I used the isolators and mounted to that. And then I had a little bit of issue with when the machine running, this would not vibrate, but it would kind of wobble a little bit. So again, uh, don't want metal mounted. So I got Lexan, bent this, made a piece of angle and now this thing is mounted when this machine's running that thing's solid not moving so that's probably the biggest change that i made so if you have a machine you don't have a lot of room and you want to put it close to the wall know that you can um, you just have to you know do a couple differences this is what i happen to do um, could have put it on the other leg on the other side but then your e-stop which is really kind of non-functional anyway isn't there anyway that's what i did so moving on to the next upgrade that's the next upgrade actually two that is the touch monitor that i mounted on a roll around table that way obviously as you see right there i cannot walk between the mill and my workbench if it stayed there the original mount that mounts on the corner of this leg and comes out the monitor ends up being right here so it's that blocking my way so i had to put it on this roll around table so now i mounted it and my coolant relay everything is on here mounted on it rolls around i can move it over here out of the way when i'm not using it and that's i guess that would be upgrade or difference number two is i mounted my touch screen to a roll around table change number three is this awesome cover with a pocket for a pennant that doesn't work don't worry, I'm gonna get that pennant. I'm gonna get a pennant to work. But this cover my wife made for me, which covers the monitor and all that stuff, which in my shop, I do grinding and obviously plasma cutting. And I do stuff that makes a lot of dust and dirt. I open both doors, I get dirt in here. So I wanted something to cover it. My wife made that cover for me. That would be change number three. Let's move on to change four. And change four is still on the subject of things my wife made. That top. I don't run the machine with it on there. I don't want the machine to get hot. Again, this is to keep stuff out. I grind in my shop. I do woodwork in my shop. I do other stuff. I open the doors, dirt flies through. Um, so this top is just held on by magnets all the way around. I could actually pull it off with one hand right now. It's harder to put on than take off, but I'll leave it on there. To me, it's a good upgrade. It keeps the inside of the machine safe. So that is number four.
change number five is quite simple. Probably a million people have done it already, however many have this machine. I just put a magnet on my wrench and put it right on the outside of the machine where my tool change wrench is. I just got a magnet and I stick it to it. But then moving on to number six, a little more involved, and we're back to things my wife made. She made this cover with magnets, same magnets, look at that, same magnets that's in here is in here. Uh, sewed them in here, this is a clear, almost like vinyl. It's actually made, it's the same stuff that are in convertible top soft windows in the back, but actually, and she made it, that windshield for the side by side, it's that same stuff. Anyway, it has this little lip on the bottom, so the cover keeps the chips and fluid out of the door gap there, that, that little gap getting in there. But this also stops the fluid from coming out between the door. So on this door, as you can see, there's one here, which covers the gap where fluid was coming out between the doors, flood coolant. By fluid, I mean flood coolant. And this door also has a lip on the bottom, which keeps the coolant from coming out of here. Also held on by magnets. So nothing, none of that's permanent. That was change number, what, five? So we'll move on to the next one. Change number six, uh, I think. Uh, I've seen other people have done this and I got the idea from them, thought it was great. Teed off of the coolant line there coming out off the pump and I ran the line over here. I got a shut off valve right here and when I, need to clean in here, I turn on my coolant and I use coolant to clean my, my chips and stuff and then air later. I have this valve. Um, and like I say, I've seen a lot of people do that. Uh, that's just how I did it. And that is change number six. Change number seven, and I think is my actual best one, at least for safety. There's the original I assume that's plexiglass because it breaks really easy. I took them out one time and it cracked on me. I uh, just took them out to clean it. But my upgrade, this is a definite upgrade, is I had some polycarbonate. I had enough to do the two big side windows. So these are now polycarbonate and actually 3 16ths instead of that's 125. Um, I just drilled a hole in it and got my, oh, sorry, I got my, my quick pin in it. And then on the inside, I put the handle back on, that's nice. But on the inside, I put two-sided sticky tape and we're back to these magnets again. So it's only held on there by magnets. Um, I stay behind my finger, sorry. Don't mind my drill, tap and drill chart there. But like I said, I did that to both sides. Just a quick pin, that stops it from vibrating down. The magnets hold it just fine and I can pull it, change it and clean them whenever. But again, 3 16 Lexan or uh, polycarbonate, shatterproof, a little bit safer if an end mill happens to come a loose at 8,000 RPM and wants to go flying. Right now with these, uh, this helps. This is a second layer of this clear stuff. I just didn't have enough poly, but I will change these doors to poly also. So that's just my thing. Uh, it's a little bit safer, I think. My favorite upgrade that I've done. Also, like I say, I need no tools to pull this window now. I just pull the pin and I can just take that thing right out, held on by magnets. So uh, that's that upgrade, number eight. So for my last change slash upgrade, which isn't really anything, it's just something I purchased. But I take that back, my wife purchased for me. Are these two rechargeable waterproof lights that are magnetic that you can move anywhere? Plenty of metal in here to stick them to. I've used those, they light up the area quite a bit. And then like down here, obviously you can get to your work area. Um, those are just those are just nice to have. Rechargeable, nothing to do, just stick them anywhere you want. So just a suggestion, these little lights are, I don't know what they cost because my wife bought them, but waterproof, USB rechargeable, really nice. One of the things I forgot to cover that I talked about in the last video was the epoxy. Okay, so I mixed my own epoxy uh, like I said, I used the same epoxy they did, but I had my own colors that I mixed with. But what I was talking about with the concrete, you can see where it ended up sticking through on some. They still got epoxy over them. But that's where I was talking about the dry concrete. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the light and I should just put it there. 
but the you can see where the concrete sticks up some. If that concrete would have been wetter, it would have self-leveled a lot better. So again, I'm not suggesting that you do that, but if I ever do it again, I'm doing it. I don't care if it takes four months to dry out. <laughs> All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Uh, second video on the MR1, me showing you the things that I did different or updated or changed, whatever you wanna say. Just, I've set the machine up so far the way that I like it. So uh, those are things that I did. Other people have done the same stuff. But uh, anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.